Okay, we will carry on uh, going through the 3E Pure Physics end of year 2021 paper. Uh, this video will cover question 10 and uh, question 11. So for question 10, we are checking whether you are aware of uh, what is incident angle, critical angle, TIR, things like that. And of course, the application of Snell's law. So in the first question, you need to notice is that uh, this diagram is actually scaled meaning that you can get most of the parameter uh, directly by using a protractor. So uh, if we go on, you can see that uh, in part A, we are basically asking you to calculate the critical angle of this material, the glass. Mm, you can use the formula from the textbook, but uh, there is a limitation to it. Uh, for this particular formula, sign, I think in the textbook it is written this way, 1 over n. It can only be applied if uh, the light is traveling uh, between air and uh, something else. In this case, uh, the something else is glass. So there's a limitation here, uh, which it, it must be air. So uh, in some cases, you you couldn't you cannot find the answer uh, using this particular textbook formula. So I would suggest uh, for those of you who could to actually uh, make use of the Snell's law to find the critical angle. So if you are asked to find critical angle, you need to create the scenario whereby the light will shine at this particular angle called critical angle and the resulting refracted ray will go along the boundary which will give you a 90 degree angle over here. So what happens is that you, you, you can apply the Schnell's law. For example, if let's say uh, down here it is not air but rather uh, less optically dense material it could be water and then uh, this denser material inside could be glass so uh, you can actually use your Snell's law to find the critical angle between glass and water so when you do that you will see that uh, the end of glass you need to know the, 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 the question need to supply you with that so in this case uh, we are given the refractive index of the glass prism as 1.81. So we know that this NG will be 1.81 and it will be sine the angle, this, ang this theta here represents the angle inside the glass. So in this case, it will be turned into C. So therefore, it will look like this on the right hand side of the equation. Okay, for our, for our question uh, we didn't make it so hard that we give you water as the other medium but rather we give you air okay but in secondary four we will up the difficulty and you will see water glass boundary and things like that or even oil glass boundary so uh, since we are using air then let's let's show you, I will show you this example to you using air then so on the air side of the equation on the left hand side n of air will be one eventually and sine theta, this theta refer to the angle in the less dense medium, which is air in our case. So you can see that the angle made between the light ray and the normal is 90. So you will have like that. Sine 90 will give you 1. So that's why uh, you will see here that you will have something that looks very similar to the equation given in the textbook. Yeah. Uh, but like I said this uh, particular formula sine c equals to 1 over n can only be applied if you are talking about air glass boundary. So if you don't have the uh, mental capacity during the exam to do something like that to your Snell's law, what I suggest you to do is to memorize this formula instead. So down here instead of writing uh, the number 1 on top, you will write the refractive index of the less dense medium. So this way, this particular formula will turn into a general formula to find any critical angle. Okay, so uh, very well done. I think this uh, student, he has, she has already a good habit of writing down the full, uh, full form of the answer and then she remembered to turn it into 2SF. So um, please ask, if, if you are not convinced that angles should be given in 2SF, do ask your teacher to show you the markers report. In fact, let's do it now because I, I'm kind of irritated to, to get questioned in this, especially when uh, it is your tuition teacher who, 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 who actually taught you to give 1DP for 
uh, for angles. So it is not true. Uh, so what I'm searching now is the Marcus report from uh, Cambridge. So as you can see, this is restricted. So meaning that if you are not a teacher, you won't get it. It is from Cambridge itself and it is from the 2020 report. So if you look through the Marcus report, it will highlight a uh, common mistake made by candidate. And uh, they uh, sometimes will give you the answer for uh, paper two. So you can see here, 2SF, 91 kg, 2SF, 930, 2SF, 12 meter per second, 2SF, 1.5 times 10 to the power of 10, 2SF, 1.5 ohm to SF where is uh, okay as you can see here the whole chunk of answer to SF let's go to ah I found it 19 degree to SF there's no point zero behind okay so if you go and use the uh, 2020 uh, paper and you go and uh, attempt uh, question 11 B part 2 you will find that it is 18 point something but they round it up to 19 so I hope for those who just don't believe in us and believe in your tuition teacher. I don't know for what reason. Uh, please, we have more information than your tuition teacher. It is from Cambridge. They want to SF. That is how they mark. Okay. Uh, for part B, conditions for total internal reflection. As you can see here, the candidate did study so very well. The light must travel from a medium of high index to a low refractive index. Very good. First one mark. The angle of incident must be larger than the critical angle. Okay, so you get a two full mark there. For part C, you are being asked whether uh ten point one will it exit the uh will it exit the glass prism. So I think in this case, when the candidate first read this, she automatically uh already assumed that oh okay when it hit the boundary it will get out. But unfortunately, if you uh checked uh at this point when the question uh when the when the ray hit. Uh, the boundary AC, it will actually make this angle I over here. And if you use a projector to measure I and you compare with the critical angle C, right? So what happened is that from your from your part A, you will find that uh, your critical angle is about 34 degree. And if you go and measure this particular critical angle, you will actually see that your angle I is larger than 34, 34 degree C. Meaning that this ray upon hitting the boundary AC will actually go through TIR total internal reflection and it will shoot this way hits this boundary at this boundary you need to construct a normal and as you can see the incident angle here is really small so chances are it will get rebound out you do not need to go and calculate how much is this particular uh, angle of refraction you just need to sketch okay so most of the time when you encounter question whereby light is going from a prism to a air uh, that means there is chance whereby the TIR can occur so in this case you will definitely need to check whether your angle of incident is larger smaller or equal to your critical angle and then you just sketch accordingly so that's question 10 for question 11 is about sound and we are checking on your basic uh, content so down here it is really a uh, uh, really a telltale sign that uh, the candidate here is is already very nervous because if you read about this this is the range of ultrasound and the candidate actually give me the audible frequency uh, unfortunately you can see that uh, she didn't really memorize it it is in your homework so what happened is that your audible uh, that means the frequency that you can hear is between 20 to 20,000 Hertz. So meaning that if you have ultrasound, then your frequency must be more than 20 kilohertz. Okay, so unfortunately what she has given here is unfortunately not even the range of the audible sound because of this. Okay, range of audible sound is from 20 to 20 kilohertz. There is no such thing as negative frequency. Because frequency is a scalar, okay? Uh, if you think about it, frequency is the number of complete wave you can make within one second. So what is negative 20? You destroy 20 wave within one second, okay? So uh, sometimes when candidates study for physics, they are very focused on uh, memorizing formula and things like that. And then they forget that 
before they can memorize formula, they must make sense of each parameter. What does each parameter mean? Okay, so during your revision, you should ask yourself, okay, what is frequency? Can you answer that? What is F? What's lambda? Right? So things like that, you need to clarify once you find that you couldn't answer the question or like what is acceleration, things like that. Okay, for your part B, uh, they are asking you uh, why ultrasound uh, why ultrasound is used rather than normal sound. Many of you can tell me that uh, ultrasound cannot be heard, but you need to tell me why is it important that it is not heard. And uh, once again, you can see the candidate here is showing signs of anxiety because she wrote things like ultrasound can detect sound. So your ear can detect sound, a microphone can detect sound, but ultrasound is a type of sound, so they cannot detect sound. So, uh, uh, but if you, you are saying, if you skip this part, so what happens is that when we mark, we will skip uh, things like that because it doesn't make sense. So here she wrote, uh, a normal person cannot hear, cannot, a normal person cannot, okay, don't know, cannot what lah. So you can see that she is already very anxious. So at this point of time, if you find that you're already writing sentences that doesn't make sense, take a pause, take a deep breath and regain your confidence before you, you know, charge in and continue writing half half complete sentences okay so for here uh what i need to know is that it is not just that uh human cannot hear ultrasound so that is the one thing that you should know that we humans cannot hear ultrasound but please do not end your explanation here because you need to tell me like why is it important that we use a sound that humans cannot hear so you need to relate this to something like noise pollution, pollution, <laughs> pollution. Okay, I bite my tongue, which is very painful now. Okay, that's why you shouldn't, you shouldn't, yeah, okay. Ah, uh, let me drink some water. So you need to relate it to some form of noise pollution before you can get this one mark. Okay, for part C, you are supposed to explain why ultrasound travel faster in C compared to when it is in air. So first of all, in your explanation, you need to point out to me that the density of C is actually greater than in air. So down here, you can see the student getting the two full mark. Mm, so the water model, so here you can see that she rightfully point out the key difference in terms of physics term. C has water molecules that has more compact, that are more compact with one another compared to air, compared to air. So I think what uh, we, we are really being lenient because uh, water molecule that are more compact, I think what she is trying to say is water molecule that are arranged okay, uh, in a more compact way than one another. Okay, therefore, enabling a quicker transmission of not sound but vibration. So here I condone the error. So in, in, in other scripts, these are some of the things that I see and I really would like you to uh, understand the difference between them. Okay, for example, uh, some of you uh, tell me that, oh, okay, water is more uh, compact than air, hence the molecule vibrate and collide faster. This is not true because the speed of vibration or the frequency of vibration depends on temperature, not density. Right, if I freeze a, a cube of ice and then I, I boil water, well, obviously the molecule is going to vibrate or move, collide much faster in a gaseous state, right? Higher temperature. Yeah, not, 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 not due to density, right? Um, the other, uh, some other answer include molecule vibrate and collide easily. What is easily? Can we measure easily? Please tell me from how to measure easy, ease or difficulty. Cannot, right? So cannot. Uh, third answer, collision to be transmitted faster. Collision? Are we talking about collision here when we talk about wave? Collision is usually for pressure, right? So are you talking about how pressure is transmitted faster? No, this is also wrong. There's a fine difference between collision and vibration. Collision is random, it is chaotic. Vibration, you know that it is going to uh, come back to the original state, right? It will vibrate about a fixed position. So the only uh, way to explain why sound travel faster is by saying that vibration 
transmit faster. This is the only phrase that uh, matters in sound, in, 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 in talking about uh, speed of sound traveling in different